Here at our homestead, we have an orchard, which is a critical food supply for myself and my family during emergencies. And as a critical food supply here in this state in which we reside, we are legally empowered to shoot to kill a trespasser if they come onto our property and try to steal that food supply under certain circumstances. Those circumstances were met recently and I had to do just that. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how that went down, all the details related to it, and specifically about a critical piece of gear in addition to the rifle that I used that allowed this situation to resolve in the positive way in which it did. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Among people who call themselves preppers, one of the least popular aspects of that lifestyle is the lifestyle itself. Many people who like to think of themselves as preppers essentially just buy a LARPing kit where they buy all this stuff, this gear, and they put it off in a closet and it's to be pulled out of the closet if they ever want to, uh, you know, kind of role play. That, that type of lifestyle. There are major problems with approaching prepping in that way because there are all sorts of things that you really need to be practicing in order to have any type of competency with. There are lots of activities that would be required in an emergency situation that have aspects to them that you may not even imagine. For a recent example, my orchard. Now, if you think about setting up an orchard at your house, what are the types of things you think you might need for that? You probably need some trees. You might want to start them from seed. You might want to start from bare root or potted trees. You may want to have uh, certain types of sprays, insecticides that you might want to put on the uh, fruit trees, depending on what they are. Maybe you want a ladder uh, so that you can get fruit high up in the trees. One of the things you might not think that you need if you're going to be starting an orchard is a firearm and a bunch of motion alarms, but those are elements of my orchard which I've been using exhaustively recently because we have been besieged with porcupine. Now, the first time we saw a porcupine, it was eating some leaves out of a wild tree that was just on the periphery of our land. It was really cute. The whole family came out. We were all looking at this cute porcupine eating the leaves out of the tree where we just grab a branch and tear the branch off and be eating all the leaves off of it. It wasn't so cute a couple nights later when it found out that it really, really, really loves our pear trees. Porcupines tend to be attracted to soft skinned or soft barked uh, trees and my pear trees are just top on their menu. And ever since then, I've been doing everything that I could to try to get rid of them. Now I started by just trying to scare them off. I put some motion alarms and that's what I wanna talk about in this video is an excellent motion alarm for your garden. I have some that I've been using for many years and I know there's junk out there and they're good ones. These seem really good. I'm gonna talk about those a little bit later in this video. But that was our first line of defense. I put motion alarms all around uh, the perimeter and they didn't really care at all. Uh, the motion alarms would go off. I guess they sounded like dinner bells to them because they just hang out right up in the tree. And if you've ever interacted with a porcupine, you know that they have a certain sense of fearlessness. You can walk right up to them and poke them with a stick. And you know, they might begrudgingly at some point kind of mosey off, but they don't tend to be particularly frightened of people, at least not the ones in this region, and at least certainly not the ones that I've been dealing with. So the motion alarms at the beginning allowed me to know that the porcupines were there, but they certainly didn't scare them off. The next line of defense was me going out with a stick, kind of whacking at the porcupine, not in an effort to hurt them, but just kind of scare them, let them know this is not a good area for you to be in. There are plenty of trees in the forest. You should go off and eat some of those other trees because you come over here, you're gonna kind of get whacked with a stick. Did that and they didn't really seem to care about that either. Uh, I would go out with a stick and be smashing branches all around them, you know, dead branches, not smashing my own trees, but you know, making a big ruckus, that would kind of get them to walk off, but within a night or two, they'd always be coming back. What I ultimately had to end up doing was shooting them. And that's something that I don't take lightly. That's a decision that you can't take it back. Once you pull the trigger, that's it, it's done. And you, you know, you can't, you can't undo killing a creature. And I have a respect for all life that's around us, porcupines, they're just doing their best like we are as preppers to try to you know survive and do what they need to do to provide for themselves and their families so I have a respect for what they're doing but at some point when they are destroying your own food source if other methods don't work that's where you have to go so I ended up shooting one of them and it's a firm belief that I hold that if you're going to kill something you really ought to eat that animal I don't believe in killing for sport or pleasure if you're going to kill something you should eat it now there are some animals that I wouldn't uh, apply that to raccoons uh, you know as I understand it they get into a lot of uh, you know human crap and their meat can be kind of toxic and uh, you know 
large birds of prey, uh, you know, where they're eating mice and mice could be, you know, being poisoned by people. Again, all these kind of issues come back to people eventually. But, you know, there are some animals that you may not want to eat, but if it's at all possible, if you kill an animal, you should eat it. So I ended up butchering it up, which is a little tricky. I'm not going to get into it uh, super deeply in this video, but, you know, gloves are involved and you need to have some care with that. If you're interested in the taste of porcupine, uh, it has kind of the texture of cow with an aroma that I can only describe as kind of porcupine-like. Uh, it's not super pleasant, but at the same time, it's not disgusting. It's totally edible. Uh, it's, it feels like kind of a red meat. And I made a porcupine soup out of it. And, you know, I think that, that if you're going to kill something, it's the responsible thing to do to, to eat that thing. So we did that, and we're, at this point, going after the second porcupine. And what I really want to highlight is the motion alarms that I have here around our orchard. They are an absolutely critical line of defense because without having the motion alarm, which doesn't scare the porcupine away at all, I would not be alerted at all because these animals come up super quietly in the middle of the night. Usually it's somewhere between uh, you know, one and four in the morning when they're, uh, they're coming up. And without having the motion alarms on, I wouldn't be able to be aware that I need to walk outside in my pajamas with a rifle and a headlamp on my head and, you know, try to take care of the situation. So if you are setting up your own orchard, think about the idea or your own garden. Uh, think about the idea that you are not going to be the only creature that might want to utilize those resources. And you have to have a plan for that and you need to practice this plan. If this was an emergency situation right now, this would be a really big problem for me because in the initial attack from the porcupines, they wiped out all the fruit on all the pear trees. Now, they didn't attack our peach trees, and they did kind of an exploratory attack on, uh, well, attacks may be like a charged word, but they, they did some exploratory nibbling on one of our apple trees. Doesn't seem like they favored the apple tree that much. But if I had had a lot of pear trees, and that had been my plan uh, to sustain my family during an emergency situation, and this was an emergency situation, uh, I'd be in a lot of trouble right now, and that's why it's really critical to be practicing your skills early. So issues like this, things that come up, you know, if you plant an orchard, the first thing that is going to pop in your head isn't necessarily going to be motion alarms and a rifle. These are things that you really only learn by experience. Now, my experience in my area is this way. Other people who live in different areas may not have porcupines. They may have something worse. They may have, you know, a better situation. Maybe there's something about my situation here, which isn't that difficult. But if I were to try what I'm doing here in another place, maybe it would be super challenging. So whatever your plans are for an emergency situation, for SHTF, it's really critical that you practice these types of skills now because there are all sorts of aspects to, to them that you know, are just going to be curveballs that you just honestly can't guess. And I, I can't just put a list here in this video about, you know, if you're going to do this, make sure you get ready for this. Because like I said, different people live in different circumstances and uh, there are always wild cards. Now, even if you practice all of these things and you get into a real SHTF sort of situation, you know, if we had some kind of a cataclysm in our society, there are going to be all sorts of surprises on top of all the normal surprises that you would be you would have been dealing with, uh, you know, with an orchard, for example. We have porcupines right now that we have to scare off or, you know, uh, take care of by other means. Uh, we don't have a lot of neighbors that are trying to steal our fruit. Now, I'm not going to uh, make any uh, prescriptions about what you should do if you have people trying to steal your food during an emergency situation, but it is an example of things that you might have to face in an emergency situation that really require your practice now. Now, uh, I'm not gonna say that you wanna pair motion alarms with rifles if you have your neighbors coming in trying to steal your food, but motion alarms at the very least would be something that could be handy in a situation where you may have some type of competition coming for your food from your garden, coming for food from your orchard. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have a specific type of motion alarm that has worked really well for me. I've tried some different types, uh, and the type that has worked the best for me are some that I had bought, I think like three or four years ago at this point. Uh, they've been working ever since. I leave them out in the winter. They've got batteries. They charge up with solar panels, and all through the winters, uh, the batteries have held up totally fine. They always recharge. They're all continuously working just fine. I've been sent some motion detectors from companies that, you know, asking me to do kind of a gear review, and I've done some gear reviews on those. Although I don't know if I've shared any of them on this uh, channel before because 
uh, none of them have really worked very well. Uh, and I always give companies that send me a free product an opportunity to just say, you know what, thank you, but don't post that video review if it's gonna be negative. Uh, so I don't know if I've even actually shared any uh, video reviews of any other motion sensors here on my channel. But this one that I'm showing here on the screen right now is what I use. It's what I bought many years ago. They've been going season after season after season. The cost for them is a little bit higher as compared to some of these ones that are kind of, you know, seem like fly by night Charlie. Is that a, is that a phrase? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to make it one. Uh, you know, it's about 20 bucks per unit. I recently bought two more of them because I saw they had like a 5% off coupon uh, associated with them. So I bought two more of them and I'm going to be adding them more and more around my orchard as my orchard also expands. Now I know buying five of these motion sensors for hundred dollars is, you know, that's, that's a fair bit of investment there. But if you think about it from another perspective, if you buy five of these motion detectors and you can put them up around the periphery of your orchard and it protects an entire season's worth of food, is saving an entire season's worth of food in your orchard worth $100? And those same motion detectors are gonna be good year after year. Uh, I've had mine for, you know, it, it's coming up probably on about five years at this point. So for five, uh, five years, for about $500, uh, although I think I have six, you know, I'm not gonna get into the weed, too into the weeds on the math here. But my point is that sometimes, you know, things are important to invest in. And uh, while I think a lot of times we might like to think that, you know, it's enough to just invest in the trees and the sprinkler system or whatever you're using to, you know, water your trees and you invest in the ladder. You know, there are some other uh, investments that are important that are for events that we kind of hope don't happen, you know, animals or people trying to steal your food. But, you know, as a prepper, it's important to kind of prep against all these events. And I got to tell you, if I did not have motion alarms, I would have absolutely no way of dealing with the porculent pine problem other than just staying up night after night, uh, you know, sitting out on my porch with a rifle. Uh, and whereas porcupines don't show up every single night, uh, you know, that would be really draining, really grueling, and it would be, um, well, I'm happy to pay 20 bucks a motion alarm in order to not have to do that and be alerted when something's going on. I can just go out and take care of the problem. That's it. I hope you found this video helpful. Whether you were talking about motion alarms or orchards or gardens or whatever, it's really critical to practice your skills now because there are all kinds of curveballs that get thrown at you even during normal times. And it's important to live this lifestyle instead of just plan to LARP it at some point in the future. That's it. And thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.